In 1 Samuel chapter 8, the people, the elders of Israel, now I want us to go there, 1 Samuel chapter 8 from verse 1, I want to show you something. Now, I want you to watch and follow this carefully. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old. Samuel was what? When Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Take note of that. Samuel made his children judges over Israel. Next verse. The name of the firstborn was Joel and the, and the name of the second was Abijah. They were judges in Bethsheba. Next verse. But... His sons did not walk in his ways. Come on, don't be faster than me. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes and perverted justice. So the character of the sons that prophet Samuel made judges over the land. I want you to follow this now. Next verse. Then all the elders who... The elders, all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. Go on. And said to him, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. I ask you the question, were they right or were they wrong in the situation they found themselves? Talk to me. Now, they had seen how Samuel had judged them. Samuel was a cool guy, righteous guy. Praise God. He was a right. I mean, Samuel one day told them, look, I stand in front of you and I ask, is there anyone that I have taken their money or taken their wives or taken anything that belongs to them? The whole nation shouted, no, sir. He was that righteous. And remember, he was not even in the lineage of priesthood. You know the story. Now, he had sons that for whatever reason did not walk in his ways. And now, he was an old man, so he needed help in judging the people. And then, for whatever reason, now the Bible didn't tell us whether he heard God concerning this or not. Praise God. But he made this his corrupt sons judges over the nation. And the people saw their mothers of Randy and they were displeased. Sitting down thinking how they would solve their problem. They came to Samuel and they told him exactly what the problem was. They said, sir, your sons are not walking in your ways. So this is what we have reasoned out. Now because you may die any moment. And you've already made them judges. What does that mean? If Samuel dies any moment, these two of his sons will now decide which of them will now become king, the main judge. You understand what I'm saying? Because one of them has to become the main judge. And they looked at the two of them, no hope in the two of them. So look, Samuel, before you die, they've looked around them and they said that, look, other nations are ruled by kings. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? So they said, okay, why don't you give us a king like the other nations? Now watch this, next verse. But the, the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. Now it displeased Samuel. But what was Samuel's response? He went to the Lord and he prayed. And the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people. Now God didn't argue. God didn't tell him anything. God just said, give them what they want. Heed the voice of the people in all that they have said to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Now, what's God saying here? God is saying that I was still interested in judging them. I was still interested in ruling over them like I did with you. But then, what we have physically doesn't show that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But God says, leave them. They didn't reject you. They reject me. So give them what they want. Next verse. 
according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing also to you. <laughs> now God is talking to Samuel. He say, all these things you're suffering, you're just a small boy. <laughs> I have suffered this thing from the day I brought these people out of the land of Egypt. Now, the very people God sought to save were the very same people that were spitting on his face. How? Because his ways are not our ways. Many times, now this is what makes them do the things they do. Many times we feel this is the way we should go. Are you getting what I'm saying? We feel, look, we, we have sense. This is what we should do. This is what we are supposed to do. And let's just rise up and do it. But then we forget. Now, in, you ask yourself, in a situation like this, what do you expect the people to do? Samuel had ruled them well, no doubt. But hey, these two sons, he just may not. Maybe if Samuel had just kept quiet and you understand what I'm saying, maybe they would have been okay. But the moment they saw the movement of Samuel, ah, he wants to make his children to inherit this thing that he's doing. Do you understand? Ah, nah, 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 these guys, can you imagine these guys being our judges? Oh, we are finished. <laughs> That was their thought. But then, they should have gone to Samuel and said, now, I want you to follow this. They should have gone to Samuel and said, Samuel, your sons, they are not like you. Can you find out from the Lord what is his mind concerning us? Because if we leave this your sons, they are going to be terrible. But can you find out from the mind of God? This was their problem. They brought a suggestion. Are you listening to me? They brought a suggestion before the Lord and said, we want a king. Now, where did that suggestion come from? They have looked around themselves and they have said, oh, this one has democracy. You see, he's working for them every four years. If they don't like the person, they root the person out. Ah, that looks good. That looks good. This one, they have a monarchy system. You know, they are, see their king, he leads them to work. See the way they dress. Man, we like this. You know, our own. Someone will just come and say, Thus says the Lord, you shall not fight. And then the next day, we will see the people are roasted. <laughs> you know, like, look, man, will this thing continue? How long will this thing last? So they look at other nations. They have formations in their army. They have training sessions for their army. Are you getting what I'm saying? They plan. They send people to school. To learn how to fight. They look at them, themselves as a nation. We really don't know how we exist, you know. <laughs> you get that? But for some reason, we are never defeated. <laughs> but how well can this thing be sustained? This is the same thing that goes through our minds. And so now they saw somewhere move in that direction. He made his son and said, ah, no, 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 no. We're going to be in trouble. They did not ask the mind of God. They took a stand by what they have seen outside. And God spoke to them and said, look, you guys. So he told Samuel, give them what they want, but warn them. And he told Samuel exactly what to warn them about. He said, this thing you are asking for. This is the kind of king that you are going to have. Was God against them having a king? Not necessarily. Because Moses had prophesied to them that a time will come when you will need a king. And Moses began to tell them, this is the kind of king that you are going to set to rule over you. So Moses had prepared them for that season. Are you following what I'm saying? But then it was the way that they went about it. The same thing. The moving of the ark was not the problem. It was the way they went about moving the ark that was the problem. See, when you come to dealing with God, you don't, you don't come with your own wisdom. You come to find out from him what his wisdom is. And when you find out his wisdom, you accept it. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And now, of course, you know, it was not the people that chose Saul to be their king, was it? Were they? No. No, the, you, you read the story, you see the supernatural occurrence that took place. Even Saul meeting Samuel was supernatural. But Saul turned out to be 
not a so good king. Why? See, because the people want it. So now you say, but is it not God that gave them? Why would God give them a king that would not qualify? Big question. Was it God that gave them the king? Talk to me. Was it God that gave them the king? <laughs> Praise God. I'll tell you something today. <laughs> the moment they asked for a king, and God said to Samuel, give them a king. That's what God said. This was God's instruction to Samuel. What did he say? Heed their voice and make them a king. Take note of that word. Make them a king. Now, Samuel now said, okay, everybody go back to your city. We'll look into this matter. Then we go into the next chapter. And then we see how Saul came over to Samuel. And Samuel had heard a voice that, hey, there's this man that is coming by this time tomorrow. When he comes, anoint him, he will be the king over Israel. Now, God said to Samuel, give them a king. God didn't say, I will give them a king. He says, give them a king. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The moment God said, give them a king. Now, hear me and hear me good. The moment God says, give them a king, angels took over that operation. I hear what I'm saying. Angels took over that operation. Now, because Samuel was one who will not wake up and take decisions by himself, Samuel was one who will wait for the, you know, the Bible said the word, their word is a light unto my, uh, a light, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Samuel will always wait for a lamp to move. He always wants to know what the next step is from the Lord. Are you listening to me? So, Samuel could have actually sat down and begin to think of a system to select a king for the people because God had given him that instruction, give them a king. But then Samuel will still go back and say, okay, Lord, what next step am I supposed to take? Do you get what next step am I supposed to take? And that's how Saul was led. Now, how was Saul chosen? How was Saul chosen? It was very simple. The angels just look and said, well, they need a king who will be a man of war. So let's take the giants among them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we need a man who his appearance must look like a king. So it was so easy. The Bible said they chose Saul. He was head and shoulder above everybody. Physical attribute. It was not, they did, there was no spiritual attributes. There was no spiritual inclination. Are you getting what I'm saying? There was nothing. They just selected. Now that's not how God chooses. And you understand what I'm saying? But then there was supernatural occurrence that took place. Samuel didn't just go and say, okay, who's the head? And no, no, no. You read the story. Samuel was just in his own place. He had heard a voice. Tomorrow about this time, I'm bringing somebody to you. And then the, the ass got missing. And they were, Saul and his servant were looking for the ass. And then they got to this, oh, there's a prophet in this place. And then they got to that place. All these things were operation of angels. Because they have chosen the physical one that looks like a king to be king. And Saul became king. And of course, he couldn't now carry out the assignment of a judge over Israel. Every instruction God gives to him, he keeps failing at them. He keeps failing at them. Until God says, look, I regret that this guy was made king. Now, God went and picked David. Now see the operation of God. I want you to learn something this, this evening. See the operation of God. He selected David and nobody. David was not head and shoulder above everybody. David was like the least fellow. Even when Samuel went to his father's house, he was not the one that was thought of. <laughs> Praise God. He was not the one that was thought of. Why? Why? Because everything God has preordained, he hides it. Are you listening to me? 
everything God has preordained, he hides it. Why does he hide it? I'll tell you why he hides it. Because Satan always puts his attention where God is watching. The moment Satan sees that God is in this direction, he will come all out for you. And you know what Satan's, Satan's work is? His work is to frustrate the plan of God. And it's easy to use men to frustrate the plan of God because men make their own decisions by themselves. So if we can interfere with man's reasoning process, we can disrupt whatever God's plan is for the earth now. So God chose David. Carefully selected, not the first in the family, the least. Selected him. And told Samuel, go pour oil on his head. And Samuel poured oil on his head and they left. So he didn't tell Samuel, carry him today and go and make him king. No, he just said pour oil and declared this word. He poured and declared this word. Satan was expecting because already God had rejected Saul from being king. Satan was expecting that Samuel would carry David home and start coaching him to become king, but he didn't. That confused him. And then they left. Because now, anywhere Samuel goes is where God is going. Are you following me? So Satan automatically followed Samuel out. Leave that guy. And then out of nowhere, Someone saw David playing the harp and mentioned his name to King Saul. And Saul said, sent for him. And so David got into the palace. And he, he began to have his experience in the palace. But then you know the story. Because God began to build him and build him and build him. What was God building him for? For kingship. The thing that God has said. Then here comes David one day to the field. And he saw Goliath threatening. And he said, what kind of... By then, God had built him with confidence and trust in him. Remember the lion and the bear. So he knew he could rise up and fight. Now he got there. He said, I'll fight this guy. I will bring this guy down. He said, are you sure? Hey, 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 hey. He brought him down. The moment he brought it down, praise singer started singing. Ah, we have seen our new leader. We have seen our new king. We have seen our new leader. We have seen our new king. But hey, brothers and sisters, that's not how God chooses. So what did God do again? He took him out of the scene and went to hide him. He began to face his persecutions and began to face the contradictions of his life. What did he do wrong? He tried to save his country. And now by the action of trying to save his country, he's facing the greatest persecution of his life. Where was God? Why couldn't God preserve him? Why couldn't, I mean, why couldn't God protect him in that open place? Why would God allow Saul to prevail against him? Being that Saul was functioning by an evil spirit and God had rested his spirit on David. How can an evil spirit chase out the spirit of God? But you don't understand God's operation. God said, nah. You see, David cannot be king by the people. If he becomes king by the people, then the people will control him. So God pulled him out of the scene again. He said, nah, you can't be king like this. And he began to suffer. He began to suffer and began to suffer. Even when Saul died, you think this is the opportunity. He didn't come. He still had to wait two years. Now you get to that point where the desire to be king to have left you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The desire, everybody that is singing your praise to must have looked at you and said, bro, it seems there is one cause working in your life. <laughs> because we don't understand. You are supposed to be this. Everybody thought you were supposed to. This thing, the opportunity came. You know, how come? What happened? The time they expected, his men around, the time they expected, oh yeah, see your opportunity. Kill this man and you will become king. All you need to do is take your spare and trust him. You will become king. David said no. Say, oh there. We are trying to help you. Is this not what God said? Didn't God say you will be king? Can you imagine? So imagine that time passed. Nothing happened. 
And when they are telling the story, they say, no, see, it's not God. This one is not God. The man himself is not ready to be king. He had an opportunity. We told him, we reminded him of what God said. He said, no, he will not do anything about it. Saul died. Another opportunity has come. Oh, God, rise up. You have the men. At this point, you can push yourself to become king. David said, no. What kind of man is this? What kind of human being is this? Before their eyes, Abner made another person king over Israel. David, you're the one darling. Imagine, who is Abner? We can take care of him. David said, no. Two years. And then God came one day and said, it is time. And Abner himself came and said, look, I think it's time. Let's obey God. And the Bible said, Abner went to gather all the elders of Israel. It was not David that went to gather the elders of Israel. Abner went to gather all the elders and said, you guys remember how God said that David would be king? Yes, yes. And so what were they doing all this while? What were they doing Abner? Why couldn't they caution Abner? Can't you remember the word of the Lord? David was still alive. Everybody sidelined David. But the same Abner went back and said, Oh yeah, David, it is time. You know the story. That's how David was anointed king over Israel. 